whip when I'm looking for a hit. Put some crack in a pipe so I can suck a glass dick. Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, thank you so much for all the recent traffic I've gotten. I see how much, uh, how many views my last video about gay people, gay dudes in prison did. So I decided to make another one. Uh, I'm going to talk about when I caught a guy getting his <laughs> fucked and my buddy Gay Mike in this one. Uh, you know, so thank you for all this. I can't believe that one blew up so much. Uh, I've gotten a few haters on Reddit, which is typical for Reddit losers. But uh, for the most part, I've gotten really good feedback, and I appreciate that. I know that anytime I talk about this topic, like people are, you know, you're, you're gay, you're secretly gay, and you just won't admit it. And, uh, <clears throat> dude, it's just fucking crazy because I get so much more shit for openly dating trans women and fucking writing love stories about them and <laughs> embarrassing myself constantly. You know what I mean? It would be such an easier life if I, if you know, being gay, they'd, they'd fucking throw a parade for me. Yeah, so to, to say, like, I'm lying about that to, by taking on, like, a word, like a less acceptable thing, fucking stupid. Um, but I'll tell you first about the, <laughs> the dude I caught getting his dick um this is like a story people ask me when i when i cam they ask me to tell this all the time they either ask for me to tell it specifically because i want to hear it again or people just ask about did you ever see any uh guys having sex in prison and this is basically like the only time um you know i i had i had a lighter eventually in prison um in a in a syringe so I had them hidden in like this light above the bathroom. I had them hidden in my locker for a while, but I got paranoid. So I started hiding them in public places and I, I could just go, I could like stand on a certain part of uh, the sink and I could reach and lean over and like get, get to this really hard to reach spot. So uh, one night we had some weed, like somebody had managed to smuggle in some of the medical shit. And this was like, you know, some years ago, so it was a little bit more rare, and we were, like, so excited to smoke, we had an apple, so we could, you know, smoke it really good out of a pipe, but we needed the lighter to smoke it out of the apple, or else we'd have to roll up a shitty joint, and they're like, you know, you don't have real papers in there, so it burns all wrong, but, uh, so they're like, John boy, John boy, go get your lighter, so I'm like, okay, so, uh, you know, I walk down, and I, and when you enter the bathroom, you can turn to the left, and there's, like, the urinals and the showers, and to the right are the sinks and the stalls, so all the way down on the right where the stalls are, which, by the way, the stalls only go up to about your chest. Like, you don't have full privacy in there. But at the end, there's, like, a dude standing standing up peeing. He's not at the urinal. He's at the stall peeing. And I'm like, oh, whatever. So I start, as soon as I motion to walk over towards there, he's like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. And I, I thought, he like, he was scared I was going to stand next to him and pee or something. So I'm like, no, no, no. So as I get as I walk and get closer, I get close enough where I can see, see over the divider. And there's this little white, light-skinned dude, like, sitting on the toilet sucking his Vito was blowing the security guard. Son of a bitch! Like, while he's standing there. And I'm like, oh, sh I'm like, my bad. And I t turn around to walk away. And I'll never forget. He goes, you good, playboy. <laughs> I start walking back. But then I'm like, well, shit. We're not going to not smoke the weed. Like, I, I got to go back and get that. You know, so I walk back and kind of... Hey, it's me again. <laughs> and I was like, hey, man, I just got to get above there real quick. And he's like, you good, play? <laughs> I fucking reach over there. And this, this dude, the first time when I first interrupted him, the light-skinned dude had, like, stopped stopped <laughs> stroking. But this time he just kept going the whole time. You could hear him. Oh, it's fucking. Yeah, so I get it, and I fucking jump back down <laughs> as I'm walking off. <laughs> he, he said the same shit again, like, good look, playboy, or something. And, uh. Yeah, I walk back down the hallway to my buddies, and I remember, like, they, they could tell. They're like, man, what the fuck? What took you so long, and why do you look like that? And I was like, I didn't even tell them. Like, that was, uh, so that was a guy that he had done a bunch of time. I, I can't remember exactly. I think I heard he had killed somebody, but didn't get life for it. He just got, like, 20 years. <clears throat> so he had already done a gang of time. And I knew some people who had been in prison with him back in the day at, like, other prisons and shit. And they said he, he, you know, he liked the boys. Uh, I never saw anything like in public that he was ever doing anything like that. But yes, yeah, so, so that one ended up being true. But yeah, that was like a, a older, a older, older dude, Mike. Oh, both these guys are named Mike. Yeah, because I was a laundry man. Mike. Yeah. Okay. So, anyways, um, my other buddy, gay Mike. This was like there's a few people in prison who I, I met who I'd classify more as like normal people. Um, you know, there's a lot of drug addicts in there, 
but they're not all normal people. Like some of them, even without the drug addiction would be super scummy. Um, so Mike was a guy, I, I think like he definitely just had the drug charges. He seemed like a pretty normal, nice person other than that. But, uh, you know, he was like flamboyantly homosexual, but it was interesting because I didn't really fit in with most of the scumbags in prison either. Like, even though me and Mike in the world, like we would be very different people and probably never hang out. We were actually like, you know, pretty close to each other in there just because other people were like so far on the other end of the spectrum. Um, you know, he, he was a cool dude though, man. He ended up like actually started dating a dude, uh, there was this young guy named Twitch, and I had kind of known him before too. And he was kind of like an independent hitman. He was he was cool with uh, the Flint Cobras, which is like a you gotta have to know MDOC, kind of a gang of like five foot seven skinny white kids. I don't know, but anyways, he was like affiliated with them, would stab people for money, and he was like kind of respected as like you know pretty tough kid. Um, and then all of a sudden one day, like instantly like him and gay Mike are together. And I'm like, what, what the fuck happened? That's actually how I met gay Mike. Cause I, is cause uh, people stopped talking to tweak after that. Like a lot of people wouldn't fuck with him, and I didn't give a fuck. Um, you know, it's funny. I remember a lot of people stopped talking to me then too. They were like, Oh, John boy must be gay. Cause he, he's fucking talking to that fag. And I remember my buddy was like, no man, he's just, his brain don't work like ours, man. He just don't care. But, uh, no man, he, he was like, um, just like a normal, cool guy. But I remember that was, uh, it was kind of a big controversy, and it was a great example of, uh, you know, I never put the dude on the spot about his sexuality, but I think Gay Mike had told me that, uh, you know, he had, like, kind of had crushes on boys in high school, but much preferred women and had never kind of done anything until prison. So I think that was, a, uh, you know, an example of somebody that, like, was opened to that from prison who might not have otherwise been, uh, <clears throat> you know, but that was kind of like, I almost wondered sometimes if people like hated on them because they were in a way jealous, not like jealous, like they're secretly gay, but like, imagine if you, you were gay and you had that compatibility, like you could like be with like an actual partner in prison. Like that'd be Jalen Jalen. You'd be, you'd be doing your time easy. And yeah, I guess until they, you know, split you up. But, uh, the last story with gay Mike, I remember I was in, uh, I used to play softball in prison. I'm not really a sports guy. I just, I'm, I'm kind of in shape, but I suck at sports. I never played them growing up. Uh, I, I used to play unit league softball though. And unit league is different than open league. Like you don't get to pick your team. You just play with people in your unit. So it's a little bit less competitive. It's more like camaraderie. So we were playing, uh, it was like the third week and we were playing the sex offender unit. And, uh, I fucking hate those sex offenders, man. And the chance to like, I mean, I beat them up. I've, I've like assaulted a few <laughs> just generally, but like to get, you know, kind of stop them out in like the right way, I guess you would say. I was like, so down to play. So we go out there and play and we got, you know, all of our friends are like, everybody from the unit is there watching guys that don't even play are there talking shit. And, uh, we're, the sex offenders take like, you know, a small, quick little lead at the beginning. Then we, you know, surpass them pretty far. And they had talked a little shit at first. And after that, you know, <laughs> took the wind right out of their sails. So they were all grumpy and shit. One of those little dingbats goes up and hits a foul ball not even like and they're, and they're talking shit about this bragging but he hits a foul ball goes in it in uh it lands and hits gay mike in the ankle who is walking uh kind of on the outside of the baseball diamond across the track and uh one of those little sex offenders is like oh yeah man hit that faggot and uh dude i'll be damned if a fucking sex offender is gonna dude the sex offender shouldn't make fun of anybody so i immediately cut into him. i can't remember what i i I can't, I can't, I won't lie. I was kind of nervous. Like I kind of fumbled my words, but I called him a bitch, which is that pretty much means you're guaranteed to fight. I was kind of hoping he would, but he called my bluff too. So, and I'm not trying to make my sound myself sound like the ultimate badass. Um, I am like a bigger dude and I had a lot of size on him and he was like, he's just a little punk ass chomo. Like it wasn't a, you know, I wasn't some badass for beating him up, but one of his little fucking punk ass homeboys snuck up behind me and whacked me with the fucking bat and it felt like uh you know like when you fall on your back and you get knocked out you know just all the wind was knocked out of me and i'm laying down on my side and this <laughs> gravel's like pressed into my face and i'm looking and like at the end of my vision i can see game mike sashaying <laughs> like across the yard back to the unit like oblivious that all this stuff even happened yeah <laughs> and then i got i got kicked out of the softball league for that one that was kind of a bummer <laughs>